when, when you're on the council in the 1930s and <laughs> you're having hundreds of people talk to you, ride home on your bicycle, and people stop you in the street and say, Pete, we didn't get any coal last week, and my children need clothes. How much were you paid as a councillor? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah. The alderman in those days was paid $5 for one regular council meeting. One regular council meeting. That's a month. A, a month. Yeah. No more than $60 a year. <laughs> and the mayor in yeah. those days got $500. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> That's a terrible <laughs> salary. But do, do you figure, uh, when you consider how much public service you've given the people of St. Thomas for that kind of reward, monetary reward, do you think the concept of public service has changed? People? Oh, yes. Yeah, the, the whole concept has changed. You see, people won't do anything today unless they're paid. Now, the funny thing is, I told you, George, I was on the council. I was mayor in 39 and 40. And then we had a problem in the Memorial Hospital. Yeah. I discussed this with you. The Memorial Hospital was running huge deficits every year, and uh, when I got on as mayor, uh, I found it was through mismanagement. So I got off the the council in 1940 and ran for the for the hospital as a hospital trustee. Now I was getting five dollars a month. I got five hundred dollars as mayor, but I went on this board and I didn't get anything, and it cost me money because I had to lay off work. To attend these meetings yeah. they were always in the afternoon now one other go thing on. uh, i don't think we've got time to go into the hospital board i should just summarize by saying that pete served in the hospital board and uh set up the accounting system that uh, it wasn't when you, you say mismanagement was the kind of thing that they really didn't have proper accounting That's procedures right. That's and right. by getting it set up on a good business-like basis uh, the old memorial hospital which is the one on pearl street yes. uh got rid of its deficit um, I did want, I want to ask you, Pete, about <clears throat> um, two things. First, I want to ask you, what's your biggest disappointment uh, as an alderman and a mayor of what you hope might happen and that didn't or that you worked for? Well, that's a good question, George. And the biggest disappointment was that in 1955, in 1954, the Public Utilities Commission came to the City Council and they said, we are running out of water in the city of St. Thomas. Our reservoir back here looks as if it's got lots of water, but it's silted so badly. The topsoil's been coming down there for over 30 years, and it's filling it up. We have very little water. We need more water in order to attract industry. So the Bill Allen, who was the was superintendent of the water works for many years, his father before him, presented a brief, which I have at home yet, saying, asking the council to go to the Ontario Water Resources Commission, which had just been recently established by the provincial government because most of the cities were running short of water. We depended on reservoir water. And uh, so we went, uh, as, as mayor, I went to the Water Resources Commission. They came in, I made a study. They advocated a pipeline from Port Stanley to St. Thomas to London a pipeline to service both cities. The McLaren people drew the plans for a $5 million pipeline. Now, can we just this stop was, there for yeah, a minute, Pete? This was in 1955. It would have cost $5 million for a pipeline to bring to, water from Lake Erie to St. Thomas and, and London. London. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what spoiled that? It seems to me we were crazy not to do that. Well, we, we, we couldn't convince London. Ray Dennis was mayor. He was for it. But the public utilities, the council in those days, wouldn't go far. They said, we've got lots of water, we have artesian wells. The consequence was, I tried to continue on. I, was, I met my first defeat in trying to prolong my term, to, to prolong this life of the pipeline. I was out for two years. Alan Johnson came in, who had served uh, as my co-mayor with me uh, the first time I was mayor. Alan came in, he went to London, took London to Lake Huron. So they went, they bought a pipeline for 38 or 40 million dollars. We went, when the Ford people came in here, John Robarts came down, he says, you've got a pipeline, put it in. This pipeline, we put it in for Ford, yeah. we put it in for Ford, and uh, it was 13 or 14 million dollars. So we got two pipelines for about 50 million dollars. 
where the city is going to have a pipeline in 55, 56, yeah. or $5 million. Well, I can understand why you regard that as would your biggest paid. disappointment. Would that have been paid. It's terribly difficult, isn't yeah. it, to get two cities to work That's together, right. two communities to That's work right. together. Now, also I want to ask you something about garbage, which uh, you regard as one of your successes. <laughs> I don't that, that sounds awful, Pete. I don't mean it that way. But uh, you, uh, this early council in the 30s again, pioneered uh, yes. the garbage collection, uh, removed it from city hands. We had open dumps. There was no, there was open dumps where we dumped all our garbage. We had what we called swill. We had open trucks drawn by horses. The swill, of course, was the liquid garbage. It, we took it out to the piggery out at Penn Hills, out on East Talbot Street. We took it to, Mc, to McManus's farm south of the city, to their piggeries. They had extensive piggeries. And uh, that's where we dumped our garbage. Again, I must point to Ernie Duckworth. He was chairman of the Board of Works. He came in and he said, we've got to change the garbage system. So we went into incineration. And I know I remember Ernie and I was sent by the council to go up to Sarnia to meet the Francis Hankin people to get an incinerator. We got an incinerator of $17,000. We had to take a vote of the people on it. We, <laughs> seven, just imagine, we spend millions today never without a vote. But we had for 17000 we went, the people passed it. We had the incinerator. Then the thing was, we got these garbage go-getters. We, we motorized. We sold our horses and motorized it. We brought in these three beautiful garbage go-getters in be beautiful white, all in white. <laughs> Ernie Duckworth was mayor at that time. He put on white overalls. He put the garbage men in white overalls, and they went out to collect the garbage. <laughs> yeah. This was yeah. the transition yeah. from, from the, the horse to the motor. Yeah. Then the other thing that I want to say is that 25 years ago uh, I was chairman of the committee that was instrumental in putting the garbage under private contract under McKay and it's been there since we've saved hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah. and I'm still yeah. chairman of the solid waste disposal committee now planning where to put our garbage next. Uh, Pete I think uh, uh, just might point out too that problems kind of stay the same don't Just they, they the repeat yeah. themselves yeah. Uh, we're still arguing now about whether uh, garbage should be a municipal yes. service yes. whether the county should take it over or whether they should uh, still uh, uh, farm it out to right. a keg and let uh, a private individual look after it and uh, <clears throat> that we also uh, one of the other things is public transportation which yes. just come into an expensive system that we put in and we've had several different tries at this street cars and so on and yet it's one of the sort of essential things we have to do That's right. now Pete we have approximately two minutes left is there any uh, an, any point you'd like to make do you think you can make in one minute <laughs> <laughs> well it's been an interesting time in my life I've uh, I've made it a hobby and uh, I, when you've been in public office for around 40 years, you've touched the life of the community at a great many points. Well, Pete, I think we're going to uh, have to wind it up. And I, I'd like to say not only thank you very much for uh, taking the time to come here and uh, talking about the municipal history of St. Thomas, but I think the citizens of St. Thomas owe you a great debt of gratitude for all the very fine service you've given them on all the various boards you've been on, on as mayor and as alderman. And I'd like to remind our viewers, if you enjoyed this program, you might phone all of you and tell them that you liked it, because this is a public service of all of you. Uh, none of us are paid for this, and there are four young men in the studio who are running this program and two in a control room, and none of them are paid. And uh, if you enjoyed it, would you uh, please phone all of you? And I'd like to remind you, it will be repeated tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. And uh, you can always phone Pete Lang at home. I'm sure most citizens of St. Thomas know where uh, he lives and they have do. availed themselves of his services in the past. And uh, on behalf of all of you, I'd uh, like to thank you again, Pete. I'd like to wish good night to everyone. And I hope you'll watch us the second Wednesday in February. Thank you very much. Good night.